Looking at the news, it can be really hard to tell what exactly is and is not happening with the housing prices. Now, for a long time, a lot of us in the industry have been hearing people say, we're going to wait until the bottom falls out. We're going to wait through the housing recession. We're going to wait till the prices crash. But what if, what if the housing recession has already happened and it's already been rebounding? Stick around, we're gonna break this down for you today. Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. It is your central main realtor, Nick Isgro with eXp Realty. And as I just stated at the beginning, there's a lot of buzz going on right now about what is and is not happening in the housing market. Now, if you're listening to kind of anecdotal things, if you're reading some of the national headlines, you may come to the conclusion that there's still a recession coming, there's still gonna be a big bubble. But there was recently an article that was just released last week in the Wall Street Journal stating that the housing recession has already happened. Well, is that true? Have prices already rebounded? We're gonna get into that today. We're gonna to look at the actual numbers, both nationally, and then we're gonna break it down right here, as we always do, in the central main market so you can know what's going on locally. Now, before I get into any of that, I wanna welcome you here to the channel. If you've never been here before, we cover all things real estate here in the state of Maine, but particularly, right here in the central main market. Now, if that's of interest to you or adds value to your process in the buying and selling of homes or maybe you just like real estate, do me a favor, go ahead and like this video, hit subscribe, knock that little alarm bell, you'll be notified every time I put out new content. So if prices already peaked, are we headed to a recession or has the recession already happened? Are housing prices already rebounding? Are we making our way out of it? Regardless of whether or not you're buying or selling in this market, the answer to this question is absolutely critical because it's going to affect how you operate in the current environment that's out there. Now to avoid an unfair comparison, we wanna look at month over month numbers. And as I always say on this channel, you wanna look at the trend, what is happening with the trends, and then we're gonna take it from the national down to the local so you can see, does it match up? Are we doing something a little bit different here in Central Maine? What is happening here? Because that's really what this channel is all about. But just to get us started, let's jump into the national numbers right now. I'm gonna bring up a chart so you can see month over month what has been happening with home prices nationally. So this chart right here is broken down into what was happening nationally with home prices. These are three independent sources, independent of each other as far as gathering the data, but they all paint a very similar picture. So the way I want you to look at this graph is this. Let's break it down into three sections, okay? You have the first half of 2022. As you know, last year, prices were going up and up and up. Then we hit the skids, really, about halfway through the year 2022. Prices started to go down. That's where a lot of us were coming out here talking about a shift in the marketplace. We were talking about longer market times, price adjustments that were happening that really happened through the entirety of the second half of 2022. But as we enter 2023, look at what's happening. You're seeing prices on the uptick. This is showing prices coming back up after a good six to seven month period where prices were actually going down and bottoming out. That's where we saw, again, all those price adjustments, all of those days on market lasting a little bit longer, no longer getting 100% you know, uh, of the asking price, things like that. Now, the fact that all three of these sources are showing that not only did prices go down and bottom out, that really, if we look at coming up into March and April of this last spring, that prices were definitely rebounding, is a pretty good sign that that's exactly what's happening. So what happened here? Because a year ago, or about half a year ago, we were on this channel talking about you know, the shifting marketplace. Are we coming back into what may be a little bit more balance between buyers and sellers? Well, I can tell you, buyers in the market right now are certainly remaining a little pickier than they were a year ago. We are seeing some negotiating going on comparatively to a year before. However, it's getting highly competitive again, and this is why there's just not a lot of homes on the market. The inventory, at the end of the day, continues to be the driver as to what's happening in the market. So we can talk about interest rates going up, and that's really what happened. If you go back and look last summer, interest rates shot up. There was a shock to the marketplace. People said, whoa, I'm gonna hold back. Now they're starting to get used to the new normal that interest rates are pretty stable and have been for quite some time between that six and 7% rate. And I think anybody inside the industry and frankly outside the industry would agree is that as long as demand continues to outstrip supply, we're not going to see a huge crash. Now in this case, that was a good thing because we didn't see a massive real estate crash like there were a lot of people predicting. Now there were a lot of us who were out here saying that we didn't think it was gonna happen also, but there was a lot of prediction and there was a lot of uncertainty in the market 
you know, six to seven months ago, of what is really going to happen? Are we headed towards a crash? Now, there were a lot of other factors that would have said that we were not headed to that because there's so many differences between now and 2008, which is what a lot of people still have fresh in their memory. But with that in mind, it's very clear that that's not what happened. Supply and demand continues to rain in the market. And in this case, it still continues to get hung up on the supply side. So now I know you're thinking, great, Nick, you showed us the national numbers, get to the point, what is going on here in central Maine? That's where we're buying and selling. We want to know what's happening. Let's take a look at that and see if we match up. All right, there's really three graphs I want to show you here. All of them are going to tell the same story. They're all going to line up exactly what we just saw in those national figures. So take a look at this. First, we're going to look up the average days on market. So average days on market, how much time does a home that comes to the market here in central Maine, how much time does it spend on the market before going into escrow? Why is this important? Well, it's important because you would think that the fewer homes we have in the market and the more there is a demand for those homes, that the shorter amount of time on the market. If there's not people out buying those homes, which means buyers have more choices, there's more negotiating room because homes are sitting a little bit longer, then there's going to be a longer time period on the market. Take a look at this. Exactly the opposite of what we saw on the pricing. We saw on those other graphs where the pricing went down during those save months, what happened here in Central Maine? Days on market went up. That's exactly what we would expect to see if we were following a similar trend. It makes a lot of sense. There was a slowdown in the market. We can see homes were sitting a little bit longer. What did that do to price at the same time? Take a look at this. This is the sale to list price ratio. This is how much of the asking price were sellers getting. You can see last year, as we saw in the green in that first half of 2022, sellers were generally getting more than what they were asking for. What happened as we got into the second half of 2022, beginning of 2023? You can see here, the numbers go down. That follows that trend where prices were dropping. Sellers were no longer getting even uh, exactly what they were asking for. They were getting less than they were asking for what's happened over this last spring and early summer market. Prices are on the rebound. Prices are going up. Home sellers are once again, on average, getting more than what they're asking for. So this is following that trend. All right, so this last number I want to show you is really going to drive the point home. Now, this is the median sold price here in Kennebec County over the last 12 months. Take a look at this. We see where that median price was up. There's a little bit of instability there. You can see that median price dipped during those slower periods. Come this spring, this summer, we're right back up. We're actually above where we were a year ago. As of last month, the month of June, we we're about $10,000 over year over year number is June to June. But in general, you can see the same trend. All right, so what does all this mean? It means that if we're looking at the national numbers, the housing recession already took place and it wasn't really much of a recession, but you should be thankful for that because that might have saved us from a greater economic recession in all other aspects of our lives, not just in housing. But we saw the dip, we saw the slowdown, we saw the market hesitation, we thought things might be shifting, but this spring, this summer, things have bounced right back. Same thing here in central Maine, right here in Kennebec County, we have followed that exact national trend. So what does this mean? What does this mean if you're a buyer? What does it mean if you're a seller? Well, it means if you're selling your home right now, that frankly, you didn't miss the boat. There were a lot of people who thought as the market was going down, gee, things are different. And if you sold during that time, I can promise you it felt that way. Even though prices were still strong, you felt like you might have missed the window because you were kind of back at a different level of negotiating. Now we're back to where we were last spring, in fact, where buyers are on the market, supply just isn't there. So if you are priced right, if you are staged right, if you do all the right things and get your marketing in order, then you're going to have a great sale. You're gonna have a great experience for really the top of your price range. If you're a buyer, what does it mean? It means that frankly, there's a lot more competition and it means that you really wanna get out there, find the right home, have a little patience cooked into your calendar. But when you find the house you're looking for, put your best foot forward. And the good news here is that as this trend continues, you should continue to expect appreciation. Do we expect a huge bottoming out market crash? No, and in fact, the people who bought last year who weren't waiting for that crash, who were moving forward with their lives and getting to that next level, they now already have the benefit of having owned their home over the last year, not buying into the hysteria, and the equity is now cooked into their home. It was a great investment for them to make, still could be a great investment for you. That's what I have for you guys today. I hope you enjoyed this quick video. Um, what are your thoughts on this? What are your predictions? Do you feel like 
we've already made it through that housing recession or am I just kind of pie in the sky? Do you think there's some kind of danger on the horizon or does it look like the market's gonna continue? I think it's gonna continue, but always love to hear your thoughts. Go ahead, drop a comment below. Of course, if you guys are looking for someone to navigate you through the crazy waters that we're going through right now in this market, all of my contact information is linked in the post below. Feel free to reach out. I promise to get back to you if I miss your call. Of course, as always, I thank each and every one of you for sticking around to the end of this video. Till the next one, see you next time.